with Alana Brophy, weather rate certified 11 years in a row. Kicking off a new week and it's a toasty one out there today. Yes, with more heat expected, right Alana? Yes, a little bit of a sizzle today and that even amps up as we roll into tomorrow. Gorgeous shot from Utah Lake. Looks a little hazy as you look towards the Lake Mountains. Not a surprise though, because while people are out there, temperatures in the low 90s in Utah County enjoying the water. We do have some wildfires burning. The Ghost Shoot Fire just west of Wendover putting off some light to moderate smoke in the northwest corner of the state. That's going to be the case as we get through the next several hours. We also have some hazy conditions down there north, near the Four Corners area, but that holds until tomorrow morning and air quality could be impacted as a result. We saw ozone bringing us into the moderate category for much of the afternoon. We're tracking storms out there for parts of Utah. The summer heat means business as we're running above average. 89 is our usual high in Salt Lake. We're above that hitting the mid 90s. Increasing winds will bring in the fire threat as well as another round of storms. Temperatures staying in the 90s for the next couple of hours by ABC 4 News at 10. We'll be down to 82, but a mild overnight is expected because we're going to heat things up into tomorrow. Why are we seeing storms in parts of the state? Well, it's that monsoon setup pulling in that deep moisture from the south into central, eastern, and southern Utah. And that's why we have the potential with this daytime heating to see those storms blossom. It's what's happened. So we zoom in on the storm tracker radar, quieting now in Duchesne, where we had in the county some lightning coming down in over I-70. We definitely know there was a storm putting down a decent amount of activity and then isolated in the South Central Mountains. So not as active as we were yesterday, but we know that's going to change. So tomorrow the big headline is going to be heat, but we get a cold front that's going to move on through. It's more of a cool front because it won't dry cool us down too much. It doesn't keep us dry. As you notice, the models want to amp up the storms, and that storm potential goes all the way up to Salt Lake in Utah County. So that would be later in the day as the front progresses through, moves through into Wednesday morning, where we get pretty decent activity and the chance of some nocturnal storms Tuesday night. Here we go into Wednesday, where eastern Utah, the central portion of the state, and yes, the southwest desert could tap into that. Two-thirds of the state looking at storms. Our flash flood potential is going to increase as we make it towards the middle of the week. We're coming off of a very busy weekend with that, so something to keep in mind if you're making plans to be out and about. The fire outlook does increase due to thunderstorm activity. Not all of them will drop moisture, so dry thunderstorms in eastern Utah and the central spine of the Beehive State could see that elevated risk with that fire outlook. Flash flood potential, Bryce and Capitol Reef possible for tomorrow. This becomes way more widespread as we roll into Wednesday and holds into Thursday. Temperatures in the 90s, triple digits. We're going to go for them in Salt Lake tomorrow. will be our fourth triple digit day of the season. That's how many we average, 101 in Salt Lake 90s and some triple digits on the eastern side of the state. Lots of 90s on the I-15 corridor and down there in St. George, the heat will be on. Overnight lows in the 60s and 70s, so mild. As as we get through the next seven days, triple digits in St. George, which 100 is their average this time of year. Slight chance on Wednesday of a storm and the 4th of July now in view, and that's where the temperatures could drop into the upper 90s, but they'll be close to that average. Wasatch Front shows peak heat for tomorrow. Cooler conditions following the front with a slight chance of a storm Wednesday into Thursday. Drier for the weekend. And then as we look at Independence Day, more cloud cover comes in. And those temperatures staying above average again, 89 in Salt Lake this time of year. So, yeah, we're going to keep things pretty hot. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right.